<laughs> Senator Menendez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Could I add a fifth? <laughs> that after North Dakota remembers New Jersey. <laughs> I'm not sure there's much left for New Jersey. <laughs> really, I, that's what I was afraid of. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I, I uh, always say you can tell mark of talented people by knowing where they got their start. And uh, Dr. Neighbors was born in Fort Dix, New Jersey. Uh, so, in fact, uh, we can clearly see the impact the Garden State has had uh, on him. So he always will have New Jersey. Well, I, I, I certainly hope so. But uh, welcome to the, to the committee. I appreciate your path of public service. It's commendable and a model for many to admire. I'm fortunate to have served uh, in the House when you were serving on the House Appropriations Committee, and I saw uh, the incredible talent you had uh, working with all of the different uh, parties at work there, uh, and so uh, uh, as well as all the challenges in a very difficult period of time. And so I thought you did extremely well there, and I think you served very well at OMB. I have two sets of questions I just want to get your sense of. Um, we obviously have enormously challenging times ahead of us. President-elect has talked about a line-by-line -line review of the budget. Uh, what is Give us a perspective of what is the proper way to evaluate federal programs and agencies during these tough economic times. What comes first, simply having a goal to cut uh, and to fit targets or developing policies that ensure the maximum benefit for the public? And secondly, as part of all of that, how do you, you see uh, OMB uh, and Nancy Killifer, the President-elect's Chief Performance Officer, uh, working with the Congress to finalize these appropriation bills uh, as we move forward. Give a little sense of what you expect to come. Well, I think in terms of evaluating uh, programs and making decisions, I don't think we can start from a position of just cutting. I think that first we need to evaluate the programs with regard to whether the programs are, are sufficiently uh, or are playing an important governmental role. I think, two, we need to look at the effectiveness of the program. Uh, and three, I think that we need to uh, evaluate the, what the uh, shortfall would be in the overall economy and w within the uh, overall society if the federal government wasn't performing that function. Uh, I, I think as we evaluate those, the, the programs across the, the federal government, one of the things that we hope to do is to be sensitive to the fact that Yes, tough decisions have to be made in order to to get the uh, to return our budget to an overall sense of balance. But at the same time, they have to be done with a sense that each program affects real people, and we can't just cut things assuming that everything is going to be fine if these programs disappear. So, we are going to have to make tough decisions, but the tough decisions have to be made with a sense of who these programs will actually be affecting. I think, secondly, with regard to um, the uh, deputy, deputy director for management designate and the president's uh, uh, nominee for CPO, Nancy Killifer. I see her being uh, a, an incredible partner with myself, with, uh, uh, with Dr. Orzak, and with the Congress in terms of coming up with real metrics as to how effective these programs have been. I think one of the issues that has come up as previous administrations have evaluated programs is that there really hasn't been enough interaction with other stakeholders, including the Congress, as to exactly how programs should be evaluated. There are many, many levels uh, upon which programs could and should be evaluated, and I think too often those decisions have been made uh, behind closed doors. I think one of the things that you'll see uh, with myself and, and uh, with Ms. Killifer is more openness in terms of sitting down with the affected uh, parties and with other stakeholders to determine exactly how programs should be measured. I appreciate that. Let, let me take one provincial uh, issue and give you a sense of why it will be important, uh, and I appreciate the answer as to how we look at the totality uh, of how we go about making these difficult decisions. You know, um, we have uh, an incredibly important coastline in New Jersey, uh, which is the second driver of our economy uh, in its, uh, its beaches. And beach replenishment issues has always been a challenging issue. Uh, under the budget. I'm sure you're familiar from that from the days on the appropriation side and 
people like Congressman Pallone and others who are advocates of this. You know, that's an issue in which some will argue that that's not a good investment of federal money. I would say that if you look at it in the context of the importance of jobs, uh, what drives that tourism industry to that part of New Jersey uh, from the entire region is its beaches. So we're talking about the a uh, couple of million jobs that are generated as a result of that. We're talking about uh, the property values. We are talking about the environment. Uh, we are talking about dealing with northeasters and the continual erosion that ultimately moves up on, onto uh, the, uh, the property side uh, of uh, those communities, of which there is a whole slew of them along the waterfront that have real consequences if, in fact, the beaches aren't there as a buffer to the northeasters. So that's a, an exa- a simple example, and I could go on, about how that particular program has many dimensions. It's about jobs. It's about the economy. It's about the environment. It's about public protection along the way. And so I appreciate your answer at looking at the totality of how we judge a program to make a decision as to whether it is effective or not. Is, is that a fair example of what you would be thinking about? In the yes, moment? sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Menendez.